Welcome back, everybody. Today, before we get started, do we have any housekeeping? I don't think. No, I don't think, I don't think we have so. anything on the schedule coming up. We need to talk about, do we? Not right now. We are working on some awesome webinars and workshops. They'll but be coming they're, up. They're not once quite we get dates. Announced. We'll get yeah, those out there yeah. for everybody. No, we just finished up a overhead webinar. We had a culture webinar just recently. So yeah, if you missed those, let me know. We might be able to get you in. Oh, get some much. replays. Yeah. yeah, if you yeah, just email us up. Yep. Um, Email us up. I don't know if those are words. Okay. <laughs> See, today's the today's <laughs> this podcast episode is a nice piggyback off of I think was it last week the one came out on perfectionism. Yep. And don't worry about being perfect and just doing it dirty. Today's a fine example of that because like oh, I've already worked outside all day in the it's really windy and so I'm tired. I don't know why the wind makes me tired, but it does. Mm. And you notice know, like usually we have a computer here with like our notes and we have at least kind of talked about what wherever we're going to talk about today like not, but not yep. today we're just like we're whatever. doing it dirty today. we're just we're, we're doing it dirty scott's like let's talk about company culture i'm like yeah cool all right <laughs> i'm i'm just here for the party so um but i think it's a nice piggyback too off of we did um i've said um about 14 times you did a web uh, webinar well we did a webinar recently mm -hmm. and you did a podcast with daniel dixon from service moxie who they yep. have an app called automate motivate and that helps you with your company culture in your business and so we can kind of just play off yeah. of that a little bit more yeah so if you're not familiar with automate motivate automate motivate is a like an app you can use on your desktop mobile phone whatever to reward your team for doing literally anything, anything. Yeah. you can set whatever parameters you want it yeah. could be if you want them to watch training videos it could be for watching those videos say they aren't empty emptying out the trucks at the end of the day and that's something you really want them to start doing then then they can earn rewards for um putting you yeah, know, you cleaning can, out the trucks at the end of the day you can literally put anything you want yeah you want them to get out of the shop in 15 minutes and they start doing it and the nice thing about it is too is it sends you says you know this employee did the this you can check I think it you off you have to approve it yeah, before so. they don't just to get it's it's like dealing with your kids just a little bit we this. use a similar app for our kids to get their chores done yep. um so they can mark things off as done but you have to go in and then approve it so yeah. it's not like your employees can just be like woohoo i did all this and the rewards can be anything like you create the rewards whether it's like a 50 dollar gift card to amazon or a date night or whatever you want it to be it could be yeah. anything well and you can work towards those mm -hmm. rewards and yeah. so it's not like they get like a 50 dollar gift yeah. card for emptying the garbage yeah. out of the truck that yeah. would be ridiculous but they can accrue points you know they can accrue stuff mm -hmm. as they go along yeah so they do whatever 10 points per clean out or whatever it is right and, and then you set approved. a parameter of how many points that mm -hmm. gift card is worth yep. and then it's, that's how they it's a really it. cool app so i like it so. well because we like i said we use something similar with our kids mm -hmm. if anyone's interested it's called busy kid yeah. works out <laughs> plug, really plug well. for busy kid um but that's what we use to get our kids to do their chores mm -hmm. so um, yeah it works so it reminded me a lot of that so it's very similar and it works works well so well one thing that i like about it that i didn't really think about at first was that you can they can work towards some pretty cool stuff like some of the examples were like you could work towards uh, like airfare to go fly home and see mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. That might take you longer to get. But if you just give employees cash bonuses, they might not save the money for things like going to see their family or taking their yeah. spouse out on a date. Because if you just give them cash, it's real easy to spend that on the way home. Like, oh, I'll, I'll just stop and get some groceries or the baby needs diapers. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to spend that. So this is a way to kind of treat yourself. Uh, yeah. And have that kind of like set aside so yeah, you don't so spend it on other things. It's just, a, it's a really cool app and something different than probably not too many people out there, probably not too many landscapers are using this tool. So I think it's something at I least to check out. I think it's definitely something worth it. And for at. what it costs, it's it's really reasonable well, price. Well, if you go to, to our website, yeah. uh, in our re do we have a resource? Is it called we do. Resources? Yeah. Uh, you can find it on there because we'll have a discount mm -hmm. for you if you go through our website. Yeah, we, we are affiliates for it, but it is. It is a cool app. We stand behind it 100. percent So well, everything we don't in there, recommend we, things that are garbage. Yeah. So, um, yeah. uh, but it is something I, we kind of got derailed. Now, yeah. we're, now yeah. we're doing an automated boat <laughs> commercial, but it ties in with the company culture it, it does. today. Yeah. So kind of back to that. So uh, I just feel it's so important nowadays to talk about culture and and get yourself set up properly. So your employees want to stay. So you attract those right employees. Well, we all know employees are a little. Little, the, yeah. the, the pool is not deep right now. It's yeah. hard to find. It's hard to even get people to apply, yeah. let well, alone get qualified applicants. Mm -hmm. And I think 
you actually got a, sent a uh, little letter from a pizza place. Oh. Well, and- uh, one of my girlfriends and I, we were talking about how um, even in, she does a government job, and, and even she's having a hard time mm-hmm. finding part-time employees for the summer. And the jobs pay pretty well, like, you know, 13, 14, 15 bucks an hour. That's not bad, you know, mm-hmm. for a college kid for a summer job. I don't think that's that too bad of a pay. Um, but applicants just aren't rolling in. And so as we were talking about that, um, she's from a little small, like 2000 person town in central Illinois. <laughs> and so then she sent me a text that had a thing, um, even their little hometown pizza joint, they had to, the pizza joint had to send out like a letter to customers saying, I'm sorry, we have to cut back on services like delivery and stuff like that because we cannot find enough employees. Mm-hmm. So even the little tiny small town mom and pop pizza joint is having to adjust the way that they do things in order to accommodate for the lack of employees yeah so. martin yeah. come here sorry yeah. once again we're doing this dirty our dog seems to think he wants to wander over to the cat box right now stop okay so <laughs> so it's, it's affecting yeah. not just landscapers like i said it's mm-hmm. even affecting this mom and mom and pop pizza joint in, in a small town of yeah. nowhere illinois yeah so, so it's it's a big issue so this is why i feel it's so important to to talk about culture and start making sure you're developing culture so i just kind of want to share some tips that we use in our business to help keep people mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of employees a lot of years. And if you follow time. us, we talk about this a lot. Like I talk about how we were able to keep people, multiple people for over 10 plus years. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with culture because a lot of it, it wasn't like they were making big bucks. Like no. I said, the biggest or the longest lasting employee, I think he, he was making under 13 bucks an hour. By choice, mind yeah, you, he weren't being cheap. No. He, he was happy and content where he was. Yeah, didn't he didn't want to move up to a supervisor up. position. He just wanted to mow a lawn. Hey, and as long as he's happy, yeah, do it, man. Yeah. But I just kind of want to share some tips that we did and and use in our business to help keep those people. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're just they're a lot of them don't really cost a lot um, or cost you anything. It's just how you go about doing it. Um, so like first off, we you would have company picnics mm-hmm. and we'd come in. You know, everybody come in on a Saturday. They'd bring their families. We'd bring food. They would bring food. It'd be like mm-hmm. a potluck. So you're not like you're not forking out a tons of money. So it's not like it's you know everybody well, they brings were something. Happy to bring mm-hmm. food, yeah, because uh, it was mostly Hispanic workers, mm-hmm. mostly Mexican workers, and they yeah. wanted to cook their food for us, yeah. and that was nice. Well, like we yeah. appreciated it. Yeah. I thought it was nice, but yeah. but we had we had them all over to our house as mm-hmm. well once, and I'm you know just made you know typical yeah. American cookout for everybody. <laughs> but so it went back and forth. Yeah. But I thought that was always fine because we'd have uh, we had paintball a couple times. We had had nothing says you know camaraderie like shooting your coworkers. Well, it's it's fun. Well, yeah. I think they I think they liked it because then they could take a little bit of aggression yeah. on us. No, I was they... being only like a little bit snarky. <laughs> I think that they yeah no. But we well, had we had a volleyball court, so we played volleyball. One coworker that you want to shoot. Mm, yeah. Oh, but, I forgot about the volleyball yeah, court. So we had a, we had a full set volleyball. Yeah, so we played volleyball your a lot. Was, like especially on Fridays was having yeah. like kick people out. It's like yeah. dude, we're tired. We're yeah, done. Go time. home. But they're busy playing sand volleyball. Yeah. So we just had those kind of things set up and that was always fun. Um, you know, we, we did have a basketball hoop at one point we played basketball, but we just, you know, did things that to bring everybody together. So I think well, that really a little helped. bit of that stink off. Yeah. Please. And I think that helped out a lot. Uh, Friday nights. I mean, it, I know some people do it. Some people may get, be against it, but we, we'd get, my dad would get a case of beer and this is spread out against multiple people. You know, nobody's getting yeah, we drunk. We were not having people drink and drive home. No, that would no. be ridiculous. But once again, it's fine to like have a beer before yeah. you head out yeah. home for the so after a long week. Yeah. So I know nobody's getting drunk. Nobody's yes. doing nothing like that, but, and some people didn't even drink, but but we just do that and sit, you sit there and just basically BS. BS with them the whole time and talk about whatever, you know, family, you know, not, not always talking about work. That was the biggest thing. Not everything had to be about work. You had to talk about their families, what they're doing, what they're doing that weekend, you know. Or, well, yeah, a lot of them played soccer. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, uh, yeah, no, what's your soccer league doing? Yep. That's another thing we did. We played soccer too. So. Yep. Yeah, you were terrible, I, I but, terrible that, but you but still played. I did, I did. It, Yeah, so even if you're not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they think but, they appreciate the effort. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. they really just kicked me at the ball, I think, too. But Well, yeah, and they probably made fun of you a little bit, but it's whatever. But you were but you were always in in for the game. Yeah, like You yeah. weren't like, oh, I'm not any good, I'm not going to play. Yeah, no, I think they appreciate I just, the effort, like yeah. whether you stink or not. 
so that I think th those are some of the big things. Um, the paintball was another one. We just even just on Friday nights we go play paintball in the well, back. Well, our shop was pretty big, yes. Yeah, so, so we were able to play there at the mm -hmm. shop. We didn't have to go to like a facility. Yeah, so that was always that was always fun. Um, the other thing we did too was kind of more related to work was I would talk to our team all the time and I would let them know what our vision was for the business, where we wanted to go, how I saw the company going to, or where I saw the company going to be in five, 10 years. And so they can get on board because if they, if you don't know the direction, they're not going to know the direction. Nobody's going to know how to get there. So you have to let them know where you want to go, what you see the company doing. Like our goal was to get into be hardscape people and be water feature people. Mm -hmm. So that was our goal. So everybody kind of helped get on board with that and everybody started Well, and I think involved. they liked that because then mm -hmm. they are they feel like they're part of the process mm -hmm. and that they have a say in it. Like they have like a dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, if we want to be these high-end water feature and hardscape people, then that gave them a little, I don't know if clout is the right word, but they were proud of themselves. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, yep. we're not just this like junky company. You know, yep. we, we do good work and they yep. were proud of that. Well, on that note, I guess it was, it was always kind of rewarding to me because they would be so proud after some of these projects. They would pull their phones out and, you know, and take pictures yeah, of it yeah. and send it to their family, show their family what they're doing. So mm -hmm. uh, I think when they're feeling that pride in, in their work, that that's awesome. Heck yeah. Um, and the other thing too, is I would kind of along the note of telling my team where I was, what I, where I wanted to go. I would tell like my foreman or even people in the, on the actual, you know, laborers, tell them I can see them, the laborers moving up to be a, a foreman, mm -hmm. or I tell the foreman to how I could see them moving up to be a supervisor, how we'd have multiple hardscape crews. And seeing that, that really, it's kind of looking back now that I think really helped because especially like we had a couple of foremen, they were really good at getting people together and, and getting people on board. They were definitely and, leaders yeah. of the crew because not everybody's going to be a leader. They're no. just not. You're going to no. have leaders. You're going to have people that are just worker bees. Like we mm -hmm. said, we had one guy who was just happy to mow. Yep. Um, but if you can get the ones who play that leadership role on board, then that's really helpful. Because mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes it only takes like one bad person to like stir the pot and cause a stink. Yep. And so if you can kind of prevent that, because the yep. opposite is true. If you have one strong person that's going to like steer the rest of the crowd, that yep. really works. Yeah, so I think that was a huge thing because then they they would get excited and oh they can move up and you always have to find the win in for them. I always say that because if everybody's a little bit selfish, if they they're, if they don't see themselves well, yeah, being able to move up, they're there. For well, they want to make more money. They yeah. want to do better. Well, so if you want to make more money, then the company has to make more money. So mm -hmm. in order to do that, we need to get faster on the job, more efficient on the jobs, and you know let us know what works, what doesn't work around here. So. Uh, well, that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. You act, you actively asked for their input on yes. what isn't, isn't working. Yes. Uh, because as an owner, you just, you see things differently. You don't mm -hmm. have the same eyes as your employees. You just don't. Yep. So it's easy to kind of gloss over things or not even recognize things that might be bothering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I, I loved having the what's dumb around here meetings. I think that was, that's always good too. Cause I can see that we're want to listen. Now it doesn't mean you had to do you everything don't have to act on say, everything, but, but you at least have their input. Let us know what's going, what's wrong around here, because like Katie said, you see things a certain way, they see things a certain way, mm -hmm. and that helps. We let them like work on the trailers to make the trailers more organized, like our enclosed trailers, to make them more organized to fit like the hardscape oh. tools and stuff. So they designed it. I'm a firm it. believer in letting them do it. If they're mm -hmm. the ones who are using the mm -hmm. trailer, let them set it up yep. in a way that is most efficient and works for them. Yep. You have to like, you can't be a control freak. Yep. You gotta, gotta let that go. And yep trust that they will set it up in a way that is most useful and efficient for them. Yeah. And they, they would do it. They would tell them, you know, we tell them we have only this much money or you know, whatever, 200 bucks from wood. We had this stuff here, make it work. And they would, mm -hmm. you know, do the best they could. So mm -hmm. I think that was always helpful too. let them, let them set up the, the trailers, how they need it and yeah. how they want it. So, um, there's one other thing I was thinking of here a second ago. Oh, did you lose it? I did. Uh, well, while you are thinking about that, one thing that I like to say is just back along the lines of asking for input of your key employees, uh, not even maybe with just what's wrong around there. Uh, if they have ideas for like designs, I'm thinking of our hardscape foreman mm -hmm. in particular. 
um, when he did a patio at our old house, he had an idea for a design. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if he had like done it before anywhere else, but we're like, yeah, sure, show us what you got. Like we let him have a little bit of creative liberties with that. Mm -hmm. And so then when it came to wanting to do something like on a job, if he had an idea for something, we're like, okay, well, we can trust, you know, that he has good ideas. And so. Well, I know our salesperson would take that foreman out Mm -hmm. to look at the jobs, like especially if it's like a bigger hardscape job to get some ideas and thoughts on what they can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, he liked that, being able to give a little input on that. If you've got somebody who likes to be creative Mm -hmm. like that, then let them go ahead and shine a little bit. Yeah, so I think that was helpful. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, I was thinking about was we would allow our team to be able to use our shop. So after work, they if they had a mm-hmm. car that had some issues, they want to change oil, they can pull in, use our tools uh, to change the oil. Um, we even allowed them to buy parts up to a certain amount, but a lot, buy parts for their truck or car. Well, because we, we could get them, yeah, from the auto parts yeah. store or whatever, and then we would just take it off their paycheck. Yeah, so they, yeah. they would pay for it, but we would buy it up front and then just take it out of their check. So yeah. they need oil change, brakes, or whatever. They, I think they kind of like that. So, because mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and you often helped a lot of them work on I their did. cars. I did. It, it just so happens that you know a lot about cars, and so I, that, that depends yeah. on how much you know. Yeah. But I think because that saved them a lot of money, mm-hmm. so yeah, it was something didn't. easy enough for you to do. Yeah, so I always I always liked helping them out. So I think those are some of the big things that we did in our business. I'm sure. There's a couple other well, that I'm sure missing. Well, like good employees. And yeah. this is, this. Is, okay, we did talk about one thing a little bit before this. Because I hear people say to treat your employees like family. And I either just have a lot of bound. I don't necessarily like that because <laughs> I, maybe I just have a lot of boundaries. But I don't know that you should treat them like family. But you should definitely treat them like good employees because, I don't know, mm-hmm. I treat my family differently. But, um, but I... I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that you just, you treat them like good employees. Well, there has to be boundaries, of course. And this can be, this is where you and I disagree on some things. Well, we disagree on some other things that you say too. I'm sure. We disagree on a lot of things, but (laughs) no, but when it comes to this one, I do hear people say a lot, well, I treat, I treat my employees like family, but to me that is too many because like, for a while there, we would give people employee, and we would give them advances mm. on their pay. And to me, that's something I would do for family, but I don't, we, we had to stop doing it for mm-hmm. employees because they take advantage. They so did, they did. We that had to cut to it me, off. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Like when you have to have a little bit of boundaries, like I'll have a lot, I'll have more grace with family than I will with just good employees. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Well, so. like I said, there has to be boundaries at some point, but I, I always like to treat him as family and that's just how my dad did. And I think it kind of worked. I, well, my dad would go above and beyond a lot of things. Well, and so my dad would give his shirt up back for a lot of people. He really would. And so this, once again, might be where maybe I just have a little more of boundaries. But uh. Uh, Well, we also <laughs> talked about like customers. You treat customers different than well, I would. you like to say you got you to treat, or was it friends, like friends do business with friends or yeah. something like that? But once again, I don't treat customers like friends. I just treat them like good customers because... Uh, I just have, I don't know. I think maybe I just have a lot of boundaries. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, nobody's getting in too close. If you're going to be a family <laughs> or a friend, you've really got to worm your this way. This is why Katie here. didn't do sales. <laughs> Probably not. Um, but, but I didn't, would, uh, I mean, don't treat them poorly, no. but they're still customers. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I digress. But <laughs> when it comes to employees, treat them like good employees. Yeah. Take the whole family thing for what you're worth. I don't know. No, and just. Take some of those ideas that, you know, we shared with you. I'm, I'm sure you can employ or not employ. You can use some of those to, you know, to start using with your team to, you know, to yeah, help I'm them out and start developing that culture. Good tidbits that but have been coming up here. To me, that was all part of the whole package of build to develop our culture and be able to keep our mm-hmm. team around. Because like I said, we had multiple people. Like one, he's a, one of my best friends. He, he, you know, he worked for, for us. I don't even know how long, uh, well, he didn't I, work out. He ended up getting well, fired. Well, yeah, we ended up getting fired. Well, my dad hired him back, though. Yeah. But he worked out for, a, I don't even remember how long it, it 10, years. 12 years. Yeah, he was there for a long, long time. So Yeah. Um, one of the last form that, that was on the water feature side, he was there for, I think, nine years. So mm-hmm. people do stick around if they feel they're wanted and needed in their business. So I encourage you to start yeah. looking at your business, see what you can do. Uh, don't treat them like just a, a number or anything. That's the biggest thing is treat them like a human and treat them right. And they'll take well, care of you. It doesn't, it goes yeah. beyond pay. 
That's my whole point, I guess. Yeah. Pay is important. Don't get me wrong. I think but. pay is important, but people and um, employees also want to know that you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. They want to know that you appreciate the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it doesn't hurt to say, oh, good job. Oh, mm -hmm. hey, hey, I say I saw that you guys went a little bit above and beyond on whatever it is you did. Good job. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate That's, it. Like little yeah. things like that. Once yeah. again. Thank you is a huge one to people. Yeah. And. Actually, I, I said this in the in the webinar with uh, on the automate motivate one, but the author Mike McCallowitz, mm -hmm. and I don't remember where which book it came from, but he like he said to have like an owner's manual for each employee, and an owner's oh. manual might not be the right term, but it was something along the line. And basically, what it is is you're learning how each person likes to be handled and, and dealt with. Some people like to have the public announcement, like, "Oh, Katie did a great job here today." Some people do not Some like that. Don't like they don't like public the public accolades. They'd they might become... be okay with you saying, like, pulling them to the side and yeah. saying it, but they don't want to be called out in front of everybody, yeah. even if it's a positive thing, just because it embarrasses them. Yeah. So just kind of learning some of those people and uh, you're learning how you they are. You don't necessarily have to literally write a book on it, Yeah. but definitely pay attention to your people. So, and I understand that. So Mike McCallowitz in his office, he showed like just, it's just like a simple one page thing. And it just says like how they want to be acknowledged for doing a great job and just a little bit about themselves. It was just nothing crazy, but just a little thing. And it's just something you can learn about your team. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of helpful. So, yeah. Um, but have them involved in the process. People mm -hmm. like to feel like they have a dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. They like to know that you're paying attention. Um, this is where that automate motivate could come in mm -hmm. well, because then they're actually getting rewarded for that too. Yeah. Because with, you know, <laughs> the shallow job pool, anything you can do that just that goes above and beyond pay, yeah. I yeah. think will really help. Absolutely. So got anything else? Nope. I think that's about it. been so clean during this whole episode. Usually yes. I pet him for most of it, but then he wanders off, but not today. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's clinging in here this whole time. Yeah. So, but, all right. All right what I you got, got some for me? questions for you. Let's see here. All right. What do you consider the most overrated, your most overrated virtue? Most overrated? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have any overrated virtues. Do what? Okay. What do you aren't... consider the most overrated virtue? Oh, of me or anybody? I guess anybody. We'll go anybody. Uh, I don't know. No. Do you have an answer? I'm not mm. sure. I'm not 100%. Let me think on that. I'm not 100% okay. sure I know what you mean. Like, okay. oh, like, I guess, what do you consider the most overrated virtue? Uh, I'll have to think about that. Okay, really we, can, we can put that. Okay. What's left on your bucket list? Oh, I think I asked you this one not too long ago. Man. Yeah. And it was, I have similar things. Uh, we need to travel because we've been stuck in Northwest Indiana for <laughs> way too long. Um, so I obviously need to see all of the United States. I would love to see most of Canada and Mexico as well, or even just South America in general. We could travel around. Um, and I do have the goal of when I retire to own four Whippets. Because right now we own one Greyhound, which is lovely. I love him. His name is Martin. He is stuck to me right now. But definitely having a, Four? A, specifically a couch full of Whippets is what I'm going after. Like, I want to look at my couch and I want it to be full of Whippets. We, we may have to talk about this one. So was that enough things? This was a much easier yeah. question. So I okay. want to see the world and have a couch full of Whippets. I don't think that's too many things. All right. Would you rather be able to record your thoughts... Or your dreams while you sleep. My, record my thoughts all day, or or just my dreams. Well, I would want to record my dreams, I guess, because the, I am like a crazy dreamer. I dream mm. all night, every night, and I usually remember them all. Like Scott yeah. isn't much of a dreamer; you don't yeah. really remember. But I have like crazy dreams. You do all the time, and sometimes I'm dreaming so much I feel like it keeps me up all night. <laughs> so it would maybe be good television. So. It's just weird. I don't ever remember my dreams, so, and you remember everything. I don't know, and sometimes you, no you wake soul. up punching me because you think I did something wrong. Yeah, maybe a couple times. I've woken up, definitely yeah. woken up mad at you because yeah. of something you did in a dream. And then I mm -hmm. stay mad most of the day. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. really does. All right. So yeah. I'm trying to, what do I consider the most overrated virtue? I, st I, I feel like an idiot, but what, like, what do you uh, mean by virtue? I don't know. It's just the question. You picked says. the question. Well, I like. I think honesty is a good virtue, but I don't think it's overrated. We can skip that one. 
um i don't know being tall i don't know is that a virtue that's just that's not a virtue that's just like how god made you mm. and i just say that because i'm not tall so i'm like forget you tall people <laughs> reaching the top cabinets that's dumb so i don't know i didn't answer that one all right well. it's all right we can skip it. we'll get it next time yeah okay okay all right well sorry on that weird <laughs> on that end weird note, end. if you've got anything that you are doing to keep your company culture up and going and that's really working drop it in the notes or drop us a comment or hit us up on our Facebook group. Let us know or on mm -hmm. Instagram, any of the social medias, because yep. uh, we would honestly like to hear what you guys are doing to keep your company culture up and going when, you know, <laughs> in this sh yep. shallow job pool. Um, that way we can share those ideas with everybody else yep. and kind of give everybody some tips. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.